Today, we are going to take a look at a BodyViz Brain Builder about Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. Carpal Tunnel Syndrome occurs when the median nerve at the wrist is compressed. Carpal Tunnel Syndrome causes pain and other symptoms that limit hand and wrist mobility. In this Brain Builder, we will discuss the muscles of the hand, the anatomy of the carpal tunnel, and the effects of Carpal Tunnel Syndrome on both. Then, a patient example will explain the diagnostic process and plan for treatment. The numerous muscles of the hand are organized into two groups, extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. The extrinsic muscles of the hand are essential for strength and gross motor control of the hand and fingers. They originate from the bones of the forearm and insert at various points on the wrist and fingers. Two of them, the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor pollicis longus, are innervated by the median nerve. The intrinsic muscles of the hand are responsible for fine motor control of the hand and fingers. They originate on the carpal and metacarpal bones and insert on the phalanges of the hand. The opponent's pollicis, abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and lumbrical muscles are all intrinsic muscles that are innervated by the median nerve. Together, the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles innervated by the median nerve allow for critical, everyday movements such as abduction and flexion at the wrist, flexion, abduction, and opposition of the thumb, flexion at the metacarpal phalangeal joints, and extension at the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints. The carpal tunnel lies on the anterior aspect of the wrist and the flexor retinaculum. The carpal arch is formed by the pisiform and the hook of the hamate and tubercles of the scaphoid and trapezium. This combined structure of carpal bones and thick ligament bridge creates the carpal tunnel, which serves as the passageway for the median nerve and nine tendons. The four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus, the four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis, and the single tendon of the flexor pollicis longus. The tendons can move freely within the carpal tunnel due to their synovial tendon sheaths. One sheath encloses all eight tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor digitorum superficialis, and another sheath encloses the remaining flexor pollicis longus tendon. The median nerve is not enclosed within a synovial sheath. The median nerve plays an important role in the innervation of both extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of the hand. Gross and fine motor control, such as scrolling through your phone, doodling on your homework, or playing your favorite instrument, would be impossible without these muscles. Sensation within your thumb, index, and middle fingers, as well as a lateral half of your fourth digit, is also due to the innervation of the median nerve. What happens when the median nerve gets squished? Let's take a look at the symptoms, causes, and treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome and then give a patient example. Symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome are all associated with the sensory or motor functions of the median nerve. Symptoms may present as weakness of the thumb, hand and wrist pain, tingling, burning, or numbness of the hand and digits 1 through 4, reduced strength and motor control of the hand, and even the perception of an electric shock through the wrist and hand. Actions such as flexing the wrist increase pressure on the median nerve, enhancing the pain. Long-term repetitive actions such as drawing, typing, or texting are the most common causes of carpal tunnel syndrome. Repetitive actions can cause swelling of the synovial membranes encasing the nine total tendons. The increased pressure of these tendons compresses the median nerve. Swelling of the synovial tendon sheaths can also be due to fractured or dislocated carpal bone, pregnancy or menopause-related hormone changes, alteration of thyroid hormones, obesity, and diabetes. In order to diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome, there are two procedures. A doctor can follow your medical history, detailing when the pain started and what actions increase or decrease the pain, or a hand and strength assessment can be performed. This involves the strength and sensitivity of digits one through four. To treat carpal tunnel syndrome, physical therapy or the use of a brace can help alleviate the pain. Other options include imaging or electromyogram and nerve conduction studies to determine if surgery is recommended. 
The goal of surgery is to increase the width of the carpal arch and carpal tunnel. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 55. Sex, female. Chief complaints, pain and numbness in their hand and fingers. You invite the patient into your office for an examination. Your patient frequently experiences a tingling sensation in her digits, some weakness in the thumb, and overall pain in her hand and wrist after typing all day at work. This patient has tried a brace in the past to alleviate her pain, which she believes to be carpal tunnel syndrome. You decide to utilize imaging to determine the cause of the pain. You confirm that your patient has carpal tunnel syndrome. As your patient has experienced long-term pain and relies heavily on her hands for everyday use, you decide to move forward with an open incision surgery. In surgery, some of the flexor retinaculum is cut, widening the carpal arch and carpal tunnel, reducing the pressure on the median nerve. After the surgery, you refer your patient to a physical therapist, but inform her that the return of carpal tunnel syndrome is rare. Thank you for watching this Brain Builder video. Please like and subscribe to our BodyViz channel, or if you are new at BodyViz, check out our other anatomy resources and schedule a demo at bodyviz.com.